Hi Theory students. Today we'll be starting the chapter on sets and set classes. In this video, we'll be looking at set classes and how to find the prime form for each set class. A set class is all the versions of a set that are derived by either transposition alone or transposition and inversion. So for example, in the Bulgarian Rhythms piece of Bela Bartok, we looked at a few trichords. We looked at the trichord that had pitches 1, 2, and 7. And in measure 9, in the right hand, pitches 4, 9, and 10. Now imagine, in addition to 1, 2, and 7, if we also included 2, 3, and 8, 3, 4, and 9, 4, 5, and 10, 5, 6, and 11, etc. We would find that there were 12 different transpositions of this trichord. Now, if we take the inversion of this, remember that when we take the inversion, we subtract each of the numbers from 12, and we'll put this back in normal order. So it's 5, T, and E. Now if you transpose this set by 11, or subtract 1, you'll get 4, 9, and T, which is in fact that other trichord. So we would say that these two trichords, this one and this one, are part of the same set class because they're related by transposition and inversion. So if we get 12 different possible sets in this set class by transposition, we could also get 12 different sets in this set class by transposition and inversion. I'm not going to write all of those out. You can work on that on your own. Likewise, with these two pentachords that are each derived from the Bartok piece, let's take the inversion of this first one. So I'm going to write the pitches as they invert. And now I'm going to reverse the order, and that'll be the normal order that's most closely packed to the beginning. I'm going to transpose this by 8. And lo and behold, we get that set. So that's why I said that these two are related by transposition and inversion. Let me do that around the clock if you're a little confused with the numbers. So here we had 7, 9, 10, 11, and 0. When we inverted them, go right across the clock and we had 5 and 3 and 2 and 1 and 0. So the ones with the slashes are the original set, the ones with the zeros are the inversional set. So let me take each of the inversional ones and I'll add 8 to them. So when you add 8 to 0, you get 8. 
when you add 8 to 1, you get 9. Add 8 to 2, you get 10. Add 8 to 3, you get 11. And this is a tricky one. Add 8 to 5, and you get 1. So that's why I showed you that when you invert 7, 9, 10, 11, 0, and then you transpose that inversion by 8, you get 8, 9, 10, 11, 1. Now that we've defined what set classes are, we'll also talk about prime form. The prime form is a standard way to represent a set class for the purpose of comparison. That way when we talk about a set class, we don't have to talk about all 24 possible sets in the set class, but rather we'll talk about all of them by talking about what the prime form is. The prime form will start with pitch zero and will be the most compact version of all the transposed and inverted sets in the set class. Here's a method to find the prime form. First we write all the pitches in order. Then we look at all the rotations until you find the most compact one, that is to say the shortest distance from start to end. This is the same thing that we did when we found the normal order. If the smaller intervals are closer to the start than the end, then we'll use that form. If they're closer to the end than the start, we'll invert the set and use that one. Once we know whether we're using the regular form or the inverted form, we will then transpose so that the first pitch is zero. Sometimes you need tiebreakers because there are the same intervals between a couple of pairs of notes, so you're not quite sure where the normal order is. If we need a tiebreaker, then you look at the interval from the first to the second pitch, and then from the first to the third pitch, first to the fourth pitch if you need to, until you finally have one that's more compact than the other. Let's look at examples here. We'll take this first set and find the prime form. So the pitches are already in order. And it so happens that we already computed this one. This one is in normal order. So the only question now is whether 7, 9, 10, 11, 0 is the more compact form, or whether 0, 11, 10, 9, 7, going backwards, is the more compact form. In this particular case, this starts with interval class 2, and this one starts with interval class 1, so the inversion is going to be more compact. So let me take this inversion and now I'm going to take those pitches and all I did was I took these pitches, wrote them backwards, and now I'm going to take the inversion. Zero. Remember, inversions go right across the clock. One, two, three, five. This already has zero as the first pitch. So that's my prime form. If that looked a little too easy, because it was already in normal order, let me take a different set. So now I'm going to write the pitches in order. 1, 4, 6, 9, 10. And I'm going to consider the other rotations. 4, 6, 9, 10, 1. 6, 9, 10, 1, 4. 
9, 10, 1, 4, 6, 10, 1, 4, 6, 9. You can already see that the last one is out because it has a distance of 11 from start to end. So I'll erase that one. This has a distance of 10, whereas all the other ones have a distance of 9. So Oops, let me restore those. 4, 6, 9, 10, 1, and 9, 10, 1, 4, and 6. Okay. So we said that for the tiebreaker, we would look at the first interval and This one appears to be the normal order. Okay, but now I also have to consider the inversions. This inversion starts with interval class 2. This starts with interval class 3. That one starts with interval class 1 just like this one. So let me look at this and let me look at this. So I've got 1 going this way, interval class 1 going that way. I've got 3 going, 4 from t to 6 and 4 from 9 to 1. I've got 6 from t to 4, but I have 7 from 9 to 4. So what that tells me is that the inversion of that form is going to be the best one. So 1, 4, 6, 9, t inverted. Let's go to the clock. 1, 4, 6, 9 and T. So when we invert, <laughs> sorry. So then I get two, three, six, eight, and eleven. I subtract two, I get O, one, four, six, nine. And that's going to be the prime form for that one. Let me show you another way to try to find the prime form, and you may find this a little bit easier. So here I had my three different versions, and I wasn't quite sure which one was the most compact. So what I can do now is write the intervals between each of the successive pitches in these forms. So from 1 to 4 is 3, from 4 to 6 is 2, from 6 to 9 is 3, and from 9 to 10 is 1. I'll do the same here. So now that I've done this, what I'm going to do is look at each of these forwards and backwards to see which has the most compact set of intervals. So 
this one going backwards starts with 1, this one going forward starts with 1. Those are my two candidates. 1, 3, 2, 3. 1, 3, 3, 2. So you could see that going this way is lower. So here's what I could do now that I have the intervals. Let me start with 0, because the prime forms start with 0. And then going this way, I'm going to add the intervals. 1. If I add 3 to 1, I get 4. If I add 2 to what I have, I get 6. And then if I add 3, I get 9. And poof, that's our prime form. There are tables of all these set classes. The theorist Alan Fort, in around 1960, cataloged all the possible prime forms for the set classes. His table is reproduced in Appendix 5 of our text. Each prime form is given a unique identifier. For example, the set that we just identified is called set class 532. The 5 means that there are 5 pitches in the set, and the number 32 means that out of the 37 possible pentachords in the table, this one is the 32nd of the chart. In general, the lower the index number, that's the second number, the more compact the intervals are compared to the other five note sets. We'll be talking more about how to use these set class tables and what they all mean in the next video, but that's all for this.